Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the Red Letter series, and today we find ourselves beginning with a parable, a story that Jesus told representing the kingdom of heaven in chapter 20. Now, what's interesting about this and what may be sometimes overlooked is with all the people who have said that they have died and gone to heaven, and now they have come back. And they fill our imaginations with all these wonderful stories of what heaven is like. Have you ever noticed that Jesus never said anything specific about the kingdom? In John chapter 6 verse 38, Jesus says, I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. But I came down from heaven. So if there's anyone that can tell you about the kingdom, certainly it's me. And yet he never does. Each time he speaks about the kingdom, it represents what it takes to enter into the kingdom. And so friends, no matter how comforting, no matter how entertaining, no matter how touching these movies and these books that have been written about such things seem to be, if Jesus himself found it not significant to speak about the details, the inner workings of the kingdom of heaven, If he didn't talk about all the glorious wonder and sights, what the angels look like, all the glory of the splendor of God that is awaiting us, if Jesus himself didn't talk about these things, do you honestly think that there's any truth to these people who say that they've had these experiences, have come back and talk about things that even the Savior himself would not? Think about those things the next time you're inclined to watch one of those movies or to go out and buy one of those bestsellers. Because all of them have raked in tons of money for the people who claim such things. And that's the only purpose behind their stories is the money. Well, with that being said, let's jump right into chapter 20 and verse 1. And Jesus begins by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. In other words, he owns a home, but on that property, he has a great farm. And so he went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. His farm was so big that he couldn't work it by himself, so he had to hire laborers. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now, a penny a day doesn't seem much to us. In the Greek, that would be a denarius. But that was the pay for a Roman soldier every single day. So if a Roman soldier was being paid a denarius a day or a penny a day, this was certainly a welcome wage to these workers in this vineyard. And so this man went out about the third hour, which was 9 a.m. The customary Jewish day began at 6 a.m., And so he goes out at 9 a.m. He saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye into my vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. He promised them nothing to begin with. He simply stated that he would treat them fairly. He would be just with them. And rather than them spending their days wasting away, he's going to give them something productive to do. And so the benefit, the real reward is going to come from the fact that they are simply being productive and not idle. The icing on the cake is the denarius a day. Now remember, Jesus is speaking of this is what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. This is what it will take to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so it would be important for us to stop at this point and say, well, how do we apply this to ourselves so far? And it is simply this. We're not faithful in our obedience unto our king based upon any reward that he has promised us. That's merely icing on the cake. Our joy in serving him comes from the very fact of serving him, of bringing him pleasure. And he has promised by doing so, he will treat us fairly and he will treat us justly. Well, now this man who went out, this this farm owner who went out at 9 a.m. and hired some workers, he goes back out at noon or the sixth hour and the ninth hour, which is three o'clock. So he goes out two other times in the day and he does the same thing. He tells the workers, come and work in my farm and I'll pay you a just wage. 
Now, about the 11th hour, which would be 5 p.m., pretty much the end of the day, he again went out. He found others idly standing by, and so he pushed them to work. He says, why are you standing here all day idle? And they said unto him, because no man has hired us. And he said unto them, go ye into the vineyard. Whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. Now, when the end of the work day had come, when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, the man of the farm said unto his steward or unto his foreman, call the laborers and give them their hire, pay them their wages, beginning from the last unto the first. So start with those that were hired at five o'clock and work all the way to those that were hired at 9 a.m. earlier in the day. And when they came that were hired about the 11th hour or five o'clock, they received every man his wage, a penny or a denarius. So when the first came, they supposed having seen these men who started at five o'clock receive a denarius, well, they figured that they were going to receive more. Now let's stop right here because here is a major lesson that we need to learn and where most of our problems come from and what this central story is really all about and it's selfishness. Now we only are selfish when our eyes are upon others and that sounds backwards because we would think selfishness would be when we're focused upon ourselves. But these men in this story would have never been concerned about what the others received had they not seen what the others received. So if the others would have been paid in secret and they would have received their denarius, they would have left happy. The moment that they discovered that the others were paid equal to them when they had given more work, then they would have began to feel like they have been treated unfairly. But the only reason that they feel like they've been treated unfairly is because their mind is upon others. Their eyes are upon others. When really they should be only focused upon what they agreed to and the work that they performed. And we can learn a lot from this because we are so much like this. And this story being about the kingdom, it almost seems if Jesus is implying when you get to the kingdom, how would you feel if someone who was just welcomed in from their deathbed didn't have a single day to serve me, and yet I heaped upon them treasure, and I simply said to you, thank you, good and faithful servant, and sent you on your way? Well, if you would have any feelings of animosity toward the other person, if you would have any feelings that you have been treated unfairly, then friends, your heart is in the wrong place. And that's what Jesus is saying. And so it is at a point like this in our understanding of this story that we must truly examine our heart, hang our head in shame if we are found guilty, because we know that we would feel treated unfairly. And because of that feeling, there is a problem with our heart. And so as we pick up in verse 10, it says, when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more because they truly had given a full day's work where the other men had only given a few hours, but they likewise received every man a penny or a denarius. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. Now, do you remember when Jesus said what's in the heart comes out of the mouth? Well, the owner of the vineyard has no idea how these men feel at this point. But the moment they begin to express verbally, now he knows what really lies in their heart. And God takes great issue with murmuring. For instance, we are told in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, neither murmur as some of them in the days of Moses also murmured and they were destroyed of the destroyer. You see, murmuring is complaining, complaining against the God, both whom we serve and who strives so faithfully to provide for us. And so it's an evidence of an attitude, an attitude that is unchristlike and ungodly. And so it says these men began to murmur against the good men of the house, saying that these who started at the end of the day have only worked one hour, yet you have made us equal unto them, yet we are the ones who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But the good master looked at them and he said unto them, friend, I do thee no wrong, did not you agree to work for me for a penny, a denarius? 
take what is yours and go your way. In other words, he's basically saying, look, it's none of your business. What I choose to do with my money is my business. I paid you what I promised you. You should be satisfied with that. The only reason you're not satisfied with that is because you're looking at the other person rather than thinking only of yourself. Take what is yours and go your way. And I will give unto the last even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Or is it simply that your eye is evil, wanting more, desiring more, because I am good, because I am generous? And so, friends, do you see the danger in the condition of the heart here? Because that's what this is all about. If you're serving the Lord Jesus for what you can get out of it, I say this with all love, but shame on you. You need to confess and repent before God. Because the only reason that you should be serving the Lord Jesus is because he first served you. The only reason you owe him your life is because he gave his life for you. The Christian life, the Christ-centered life is not about what we can get, but about what we can give. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would not honestly be surprised if when we get to the kingdom of heaven, everything the Lord bestows upon us, we pass on to others that there's no desire of selfishness in us. It's all about the attitude, friends. And many of us need an attitude adjustment. And that's what this parable from Jesus should do unto us. And so he says in verse 15, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is your eye evil wanting more because I am generous? You see, you got it all backwards, says Jesus. The last shall be first. And the first shall be last. For many have been called, but few have been chosen. Now we need not beat up on ourselves too bad about a selfish heart if we truly are honest with ourselves and we see that within ourselves because that is a condition of the human nature that we are born in. We are simply to recognize it, to hate it, to despise it, to abhor it, and to plead with the Lord Jesus to take it out from us. And he will, friend, if we will only ask. But before we ask, we must recognize. Oh, friends, may you truly find the joy of the Lord. May you truly receive all the blessing that he has to offer, simply based upon your service unto him, not for what you can get, but simply for the joy of experiencing him, walking as he walked and for the privilege of being filled with his spirit who will guide you into all truth if you will only listen and obey. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you. May your day be blessed in Jesus, and I'll see you on the next video.